Hey hockey player, in this video I want to talk to you about some basic tips that's going to help you get everything you can out of these speed rings. We're going to start it off with setting up what we call the Edgework Honeycomb. Now you're going to notice our rings here, you've got your big red ring and then you have your black connector piece in between and that's what's holding these two together right now. We're going to set it up on the ground and this is kind of a confusing part because in my workouts you're going to see that I've got the seven dot drill and some people might get confused because there's not seven rings. But when you place the honeycomb on the ground it looks like there's a seventh ring here but there's actually not. So this is how you're going to perform that seven dot drill. We've got seven different holes here we can do the drill with. So we've got that seven dot drill even though we've only got six rings. Make sure when you're setting things on the ground, when you're setting it up like this, number one, you don't want to leave it out in the sun too long. So even though the edge work honeycomb is amazing, it's not something I would recommend just leaving in your backyard all the time and then doing it whenever you want because the sun can fade the color but the sun can also warp it over time if it gets blazing hot and you just leave it out there for too long. So just like any other tool that you care about, you want to take care of it so that it lasts longer. So that's how we're setting up the edge work honeycomb. Now when it comes to hurdles, because there's lots of hurdle drills here as well, you want to be able to adjust the height because an elite athlete is going to jump at a different height than say a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, or an eight-year-old player. So when it comes to the hurdles, if you want a higher level hurdle, simply set it up just like this. Just try and keep it narrow. The more narrow you can keep it, the higher it's going to be. But if you're working with a younger athlete or a shorter athlete, whatever it's going to be, an athlete new to hurdle training, then you can just simply widen it and it's significantly shorter. Now, even if this is too much because that height, although quite low, there's going to be some athletes who might find that distance a little bit too long. And for the youth athletes out there, people who are brand new to it, you can simply just set that thing right up on the ground so you're here, they can jump at their own height that they're comfortable with and get over it. So, elite athletes, narrow, youth or new trainees, a little bit wider, and if you're completely new or a, a brand new youth player, totally okay to simply jump over it like that. We still got that objective measure, we still got something we're going over, we're still doing excellent hockey training. All right, last but not least, I did mention the connectors previously. We've got these black little connectors for each one. Now you would take this off if you wanted to do your separation training. So if I was doing my skater bounce here, I would want to take this off and have it separate. You can really do this two ways. I can take it off, but if I'm going to take it off, I've got to put it back in my hockey speed kit bag because these are really easy to lose track of, especially if you're actually training on grass. These things get buried really quickly if you're not training on a super low cut lawn. So put this back in the bag or if you're just using the rings for your skater bounds or any other type of drill like that, you can just simply leave it on. It's not going to get in your way. Leave it here, still do your skater bounds, no problem at all. Those are the basic tips on how to get the most out of your explosive speed rings.